Alrighty. For those that'll catch this on the replay, because anyone watching live will not be seeing this part. Because <laughs> this was unscheduled. And we'll also see, I should be able to upload this to my YouTube channel afterwards. Um, and if so, hello to my YouTube replay watchers. I usually um, have been able to take when I go live with my software from my Facebook page, post it to my YouTube channel. So all I'm doing for this video is I am going to stamp out and swatch all of my Concord and Ninth uh, premium dye inks. I've had a lot of requests because I have filmed a video and shown my little swatches for the Simon Says Stamp positively saturated inks that I use a bajillion times. And yeah, it's been on my list for a while now to get to the Concord Ninth ones. Today's finally the day because it just needs to be done so I can see the colors, you know, all the things. Like I said, um, for those watching this on Facebook, I will have um, a list with links to all the things. And then for those watching on YouTube, that will be in the description box below the video. So let's just get swatching and then when people are able to tune in, we can chat while I do this. I'm going to do this. And then we're going to do that. Let's get me up over here. And then we'll just see if things stay working. Because as always, this is a test too. Because you, you just never know. Or at least I don't. I never know if things are going to work. Or if my camera's going to freeze. Or whatever. So. Got my little, my little squares of cardstock. I just trimmed them down into two inch squares. I use the same cardstock that I do all of my stamping and coloring on. When it comes to swatches, I highly, highly recommend whatever it is you're swatching, whether it's inks or sprays or paints, or whatever it is, use the substrate that you work on. Like this is Simon's Stamps Smooth White Cardstock. Um, Cause it's like, it's just almost like a knee jerk sort of thing to use, you know, your cheap cardstock. However, you want your ink, whatever it is you're swatching, to actually look proper, you know, because it will look different on different types of surfaces. Now, if you just use cheap, cheap cardstock all the time, great. Do your swatches on that. It's fine. But yeah, so I trim mine down to two inch squares because I use these. Um, I don't have a link to these specific ones. These are not made anymore. These were by Simple Stories. So these were made to fit the little Simple Stories binders. And they're just two inch um, pockets. However, these are easily available in a larger size meant for normal binders, like eight and a half by 11, you know, three ring binders. And they're just coin pocket protectors. I got a link to those as well. Same idea, but they're just two in two inch little squares. And then I just print off labels. I've got mine already to go for these Concord inks. And, oh, I know what I forgot. I have to grab the actual little stamp set I use for swatching. I knew there was something. I knew there was something. Anyway, let's hope the camera doesn't freeze. There we go. Oi. Okay, back. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is like a little oldie but goodie set. This came out a million years ago. This was Simon's, uh, yeah, this is 10 years old. <laughs> uh, this is Simon's little swatches. Really, anything's going to work. And it doesn't even have to be specifically a swatch set anything honestly like any solid little image you could use alphabets you could use like a pretty little whatever stamp you want really but i've been using this for years so for consistency sake i just keep using the same little stamp and it works for me so that's what i'm gonna keep doing okay so once i've got my stamp lined up then it's just a matter of stamping out Stamping out my swatches, man. So that's what we're gonna do. And make sure I don't have um, schmutz on it. So the other thing I do when I'm doing swatches is I ink it up and I stamp it once. Not twice, not three times, because I just want 
it to be true to color, true to, you know, because if you stamp inks more than once, you're going to get more intensity, etc., etc. And I don't want that. I want it to look like it's supposed to look just with one stamping. And I've already linked to with the supplies. It's just here where it's all scrubber block, all but a stamp cleaner. Because you want to clean off the stamp between colors. There we go. And then oh, I have an absolute mess. I have so many things I need to put away. Okay. So that first one was dragon fruit, which is amazing. Where's the beginning of my labels so I can find that color. There we go. So stamp it. Label it. And then for now, I'm just gonna set it aside because I don't have, um, I don't have pocket protectors set up yet for this. Now, where's my stack of little cardstock? Seriously, there they are. They were underneath everything. We're good. We're good. I'm a professional. Ah, <laughs> uh, fun times. Fun times. So, anywho, hello. Hey, Joanne. Rainy Florida. I believe it. Okay. Where am I? Sweet pea. So, yeah. Got everything ready to go and just get her done. I've been talking about how far behind I am with literally everything in my life, which is the truth. But slowly but surely making little bits of progress with things just just baby steps and I didn't print off my labels like in order because I'm not smart sometimes okay so this is sweet pea yes god these colors are gorgeous um there we go there we go hello Leanne yeah people are tuning in now because this was not this was not scheduled I have been just all over the place but yeah there's dragon fruit and sweet pea these will smooth out a bit and they'll um dry back concord ninth inks do that simon's positively saturated inks do that as well um that's one of the reasons why i like them so much is they smooth out and um yeah smooth out and soften as they dry and absorb into the cardstock and that's why i like them for stamping because that's how you get such nice results. There we go. Just done that. Clean off the stamp. There we go. So that one was carnation. And yeah, I printed off all my labels before I started. And like I said, I didn't put them in order. I was just not, again, not using my brain. It's like, great job. Hello, Sally. So yeah. Three down. Only 40 some more to go. <laughs> but aren't those pretty? Ah. Okay. So yeah. I'm just going to keep kind of stacking them in order. So we got dragon fruit. That was soupy. Let's just keep stacking these back so that I know what's going on here. And now we got Briar Rose, which is another favorite of mine. Really, all colors are favorites, if I'm being, if I'm being honest. I really like this one, though. This is like a dusky, kind of purpley, purpley pink, you know? Okay. Um, this one might be back this way. I'm not even sure. Good. No, nope, that's belly slipper. Yeah. Would definitely have helped. There we go. Actually, if I just do this. Alright. That might work. We'll see. And I'm already knocking over the ink pads. Great job, Amy. Great job. Okay. So, that one goes back there. I just, I keep, and I keep my Concord inks organized by how they have them listed, like, on their, um, on their website and on their, 
little chart. Like I just followed the, cause I, when I purchased the ink pads, I also purchased these little labels, which are separate. That's my only peeve, literally my only peeve. Um, everything's being annoying is you need to get the label separately. Like they don't come on here, you know? So the label sheet though, is what I use for my guide for just how I organize them. I pretty much organize everything in rainbow order, but for these inks, I just, I follow the Concord Ninth system. It's just easier. Okay, so now we're getting into the really light pinks. So this one is Ballet Slipper. I was about to say another favorite, but really, they're, they're all favorites. They're all favorites. Like, I like them all. They're beautiful. They're just beautiful. So hopefully, hi Patty Sally, hello. Yes, yes, I'm live. I had meant to go live. Um, let me keep, we keep kind of doing it like this. This should hopefully work. Another random system. Um, I had meant to go live this week, like on my YouTube channel, but to make up for me not doing last Sunday I didn't do a live because I wasn't feeling so great but I never got a chance I've just been busy <laughs> and tech issues and then yeah I was getting all this ready to go and I was like instead of sitting and watching like Netflix or whatever while I do this I was like why not go live and talk to you guys while I do this because I need to get her done and move that over get out of the way this actually would work better if I pulled out like my mini Misty instead of the big one because the mini one takes up less space. But yeah, old habits, old habits. Anyway, I wasn't able to make up for the live, um, skipping the live on Sunday. Plan is still though to go live tomorrow as always. You know, our, on Sundays we go live, so. Getting over. Literally. Literally. That's pink lemonade. Right? Right? Yeah, making sure I got the colors right. Oh. Okay. Lives are so much but Thank you. They are. And I, I enjoy doing them. I really do. Sometimes they, they, they stress me out. Honestly. But not in a bad way. I just live stress me out in the fact that it's just a lot to prep for and to like be on camera and personality and just all. It's just exhausting, but in a good way. And sometimes I just need to get out of my own head with all the things. Okay, let me stack these up again. So, yeah, I just wasn't able to make up for it this week. There was a couple times where it's like, oh, Chris and I both were like, we could do this night. And then it was like, no, both of us were just, by the time, you know, half the day was gone, I was like, we're not going live. I'm tired. And then tried it. We were going to go live like Wednesday night and just same thing. It was like, no. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a little bonus. Why not? And then plan is as scheduled 2 p.m. Central Sunday, tomorrow depending on when people are watching this, you know, that's, that's the thing. That's what we do. And they're fun. I do enjoy them. It's, it's fun talking to you guys. Uh, what label maker do you use? The ones for these, it's a Dymo. It's linked. Everything's linked, uh, in the description here on Facebook. It should be, it should be there. I, I'm not even like, don't even have anything open to double check. And then, yeah, I just, I have many label makers. Um, some of them are a little bit ridiculous, but I have a Dymo label maker hooked up to my computer because I use it for these things. That's what I've been using for these. And then I have bigger labels that I use for mailing cards to my Patreon people. Okay, what am I doing? Honeysuckle. I need to add the label to this one. Next. Okay. Okay. Hello, Mercedes. Yay. And hello, Rhonda. Your first slide. Well, thank you. We're just, we'll just chat and be random. I didn't even cut these very well. 
I, I was just throwing some. I'm not too worried about it because they're swatches. They don't need to be perfect, but some of these are a little bit janky. Whatever. That is a really pretty color. Like, seriously, ballet slipper, pink lemonade, and honey. Like, all of them. I really like Concord Ninth. Oof. I might need to clean up some of these edges. I did a really crappy job cutting them. I was, I was in a hurry. Whatever. Whatever. So, anyway. I'm glad you do. <laughs> Cause that's all we're doing. I just, th that's a, the max of my brain capacity at the moment is yeah. I'll do the swatches and then my main live when I go live on YouTube tomorrow will be some sort of card making crafty, whatever I haven't even planned. I've had a lot of requests to provide um supply lists info you know a week or two in advance for the lives maybe someday i make zero promises i'm lucky if i have plans like the night before like that's just how things are because my life is crazy okay, that's cranberry that's not the one i want where did poppy go poppy ran away there it is so yeah yeah it's my life is chaos and I'm constantly racing to catch up with everything, everything. Oi, oi, was wine involved in the cutting? No, it's early afternoon here. If I'm going to start drinking, it's usually later in the day. I don't drink much, honestly. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I barely, and that was why, that was why last Sunday's live. That was one of the reasons why I couldn't, because I was a little bit hungover, because we got to go to a Christmas party. And yeah, yeah. But I don't drink much at all. I really cut back on alcohol consumption. Not like I drank much to begin with, really. It's not my thing. But yeah, yeah. No, I just, I was cutting too much. The reason my cuts are not very good is this is very heavyweight because Simon's cardstock is 120 pound and it's, it's, just wait. I got like ink all over me. Oh my gosh. It's hefty. Like it is hefty cardstock. And I was trying to save time and I um, was cutting too many layers at once. That's the problem. So when you're trying to cut too many layers and it's a really thick cardstock, you get those jagged edges. But again, it's swatches. I'm not concerned about it. When I'm doing things for actual creations, cards, etc., I don't do like four layers of cardstock at once because it's too thick. Those are beautiful colors too. So that's poppy and cranberry. Love. Gotta let those fully dry. Okay. So about those, you need some surgical. I do. I have gloves. I don't care. I don't have a problem getting ink on my hands. Like I just posted a video <sighs> that went up last night. That was also another reason. Like I've just been, it's been taking me a, a while to get things edited and uploaded and just tech issues. Anyway, the video I posted last night, I did ink smushing. I had ink absolutely everywhere. Doesn't phase me. Doesn't phase me at all. I stack that up. I uh, I don't have a problem. But yes, if people don't like getting ink on their hands, you can wear gloves. I just don't care. I genuinely don't care. Okay, so that's nectar. So let's find that label. So yeah. The only time I get concerned with ink on me is I just don't want it to transfer, you know, to other things, but same with everything. It dries pretty quickly on skin. I'm not too concerned about it. Okay. Uh, I am nothing if not genuine. And that's why I say it's chaos 24 seven. Okay, did, did I clean that off? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I did not clean off the stamp but make sure you clean the stamp before inking it up with the next color because you know that's gonna um affect the <laughs> the swatches kind of a big deal so 
Uh, let's wipe off that. Pull up the sleeves. Okay. So yeah, having a little system does help speed up this process. This is taking me longer because, you know, I'm reading comments and responding, etc., which is fine. But I did, you know, I cut all my cardstock first. I printed off all my labels. You know, like I do everything and stuff. Just the same as when I'm creating multiples. Do it all in batches. Got everything ready, except for the stamp set that I forgot to grab out. And then I sit, stamp, 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 label, label, label. Done. Doesn't take very long. Didn't warrant me procrastinating it for the last... Almost eight months since I got these inks. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I will, I will pat myself on the back though. Because... Eight months isn't really that bad considering some of my inks I haven't swatched and I've had for many, many years now. So, you know, you know. Um, uh, truth. Yeah. Yeah. I wash my hands when I start getting fingerprints on my cards. Yeah, same thing. I know when I start noticing like, and I did that on the cards I posted yesterday, which I have one here. I already gave one away. Um, yeah. Eh. Eh. This card. This is the one I posted on my YouTube channel. I posted it here on Facebook too with a link. Um, but yeah, I worked my way doing all the ink smushing and I was covered. By the time I got to the blue color, I started noticing I was getting like green a little bit here and there because I had so much ink on my fingers. It was funny. It made me laugh. I didn't care. They were colorful. But yeah, it's when I start noticing that I'm like literally transferring color to the project or to other things. It's like, okay, I got to stop, scrub my hands real good. We're good. We're good. It's good. Okay. Did I do grapefruit? Was that what I just did? Yes. Okay. Stack that up. Got like all these ink pads stacked up. <sighs> okay. Um... Oh, yes. Inky fingers about now glue on the other hand. I don't mind getting glue on my hands, but if it's sticky, like the type of glue that dries, you know, tacky, that drives me insane. Like that sticky feeling. That one literally will drive me nuts. And I quit using, I used to use that, um, the Tombow Mono Multi. That used to be our glue way back in the day before there was like anything else. And I used it all the time because that was literally the only option we had back then. And that glue, if you didn't fuse it to anything, it would dry sticky. Like it would dry tacky. And getting it on my hands, it just triggers something. I don't like that feeling. But other glue, if it dries just as is like Simon's, like they call it craft tacky. I don't like that name because it doesn't dry tacky. It just dries solid. But all the other glues I work with, if they get on my hands, it doesn't bother me because it dries and it, you can just peel it off. It's fine. But if it has that sticky on it, Literally, I'm like, I've got like, I'm cringing just thinking about it. I'm like, no, I don't like it. So yeah, it's, we all have our weird little quirks. I get it. I get it. Okay. That was what color? That was sorbet. That's another pretty color. They're all pretty colors. I'm, I sound like a broken record. I can't help it. I can't help it. So yeah. Um. Yes, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I always thought like, it's just something I've, because it's just something I've always done. Like that's literally how I've always done it with everything. And I used to mass produce and just all kinds of things. But then trying to explain that to people, because I was like, doesn't everybody do it like this? But yeah, a lot of people don't. And I was like, dude, you can save a butt ton of time. If you just do things in batches, you know, or as Tim Holt says, like compartmental making, same, it's same thing, just different wording. You do everything at once and then you move on to the next step and it just, it makes life a million times easier. Right. This is where things are going to start getting interesting because I didn't pull down all my ink. I don't know where I'm going to put them. You guys, uh, oh, here, I have a container. This will work. I'll just put all the inks in a container <laughs> because I don't have a choice. You know, I'm not going to sit here and like 
Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. I'll clean it up when I'm done. I just want to get these swatches done. That's all that matters right now. So yeah, compartmental making for the win. Um, yes, it does. It helps. And especially, and I said this, I said it in a recent video. I forget which one. I post a lot of content. But the nice thing too about doing things in batches is especially for those that don't have you know not everybody's doing this like a job like me you know all day every day but you know you only have x amount of time so it's like it's and especially if you have a big pro but even if it's just you you want to make one thing but you don't have time to make it start to finish so it's like do one portion of it so like make some inky backgrounds you know or die cut some sentiments or you know just do things in batches and then later once you've got a pile of backgrounds and die cuts and whatever it is you can start assembling and make you know and that's the most satisfying because it's like oh you can sit down and like make five cards in one sitting with all the other elements you've worked on hopefully that makes sense so yeah like you're making swatches i'm making card bases and cutting a2 panels yeah things like that even like even if you don't have time to do actual inky frou-frou-y whatever card bases cutting up panels those sorts of things like i do that too you know when if it's not swatches sometimes or if i'm just not feeling it or it just needs to be done yeah sitting watching a show watching a live whatever's and cutting card bases works Oop. works so you just do everything in little batches and you can get a whole bunch done and then you check that off and then you go on to the next thing. It makes life a lot easier, you know, because yeah, I need to add more spray. Where's my, there it is. It would help if I had actual, there we go, a little bit of cleaner on there so I can clean off my little stamp much better. But yeah, compartmental making for the win. It is just what I have done for a bajillion, bajillion years. Cause yeah, I've been doing this a long time, man. Things have changed a lot over the years. And yeah, even though these are swatches, these like rough edges really. And yeah, some things are not worth trying to save time on, like cutting multiple layers of very thick, sturdy cardstock. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oi. Yeah. Okay. So I did Clementine. Spice Cider. Okay. One of my favorite colors. One of my favorites. Okay. They're all favorites. Really. I have yet to meet a color that I don't like. It's just delicious. Okay. So that's, that's Spice Cider. Found it. Perfection. Perfection. And yes, missing mojo, like just not feeling creative. That's where it does help to just do boring things, you know, whether it be cutting cardstock bases, make up some swatches or do some ink smushing, you know, pick a few colors, grab a bit of cardstock, you know, water, whatever. Just do some ink smushing, you know, no plan or reason, just... You know, you're being creative, but it takes very little brain space to do it. And it's one of my favorite things to do, you know, and see where it goes from there. I never did any swatches, but it helps. Some people are just very against it. There, there's kind of like, and, and people can do whatever works for them. Like for some, it's like, if you don't, if you think swatching is a waste of time and whatever, that's fine. That's totally fine. For me, I'm visual. And even though like these have the, the, the colors on the lid and yada, yada, one, it's never the same, no matter what, it's a different, you know, these are printed onto plastic different. And I like to see, you know, I like to see my colors of whatever product it is. Even when I know, you know, roughly in my head and I've got a lot, I have a lot of colors. 
I don't have that many, but I still have a lot. So it's been on my list for a long time to start swatching all my things. Because if I can see it at a glance, it's a lot easier for me to figure out what's what and keep things a little more organized. That's been my, that's been my goal the last few months and it will continue to be my goal is to organize my things, swatch my things, because it'll save me time from digging through, you know, stacks of ink pads and drawers and all the random things I have going on. It's cayenne, isn't it? Yes. And yeah, taking the time to organize does help. So baby steps and it feels good. It feels good to have progress. So yeah, cayenne, spice cider, and clementine. Very pretty. This camera, for whatever reason, kind of dulls out, at least on my monitor, it kind of dulls out the colors. They're a little brighter, not a ton brighter, but a little brighter in real life. But again, they'll smooth out and stuff and soften as they dry. So those aren't 100% accurate anyway. Okay, so that was those three. Let's get the next. batch because yeah oh my god okay okay and yeah I don't know for sure because one I don't work for Concord and I'm um, but they said it in one of their in a it was before Black Friday I think they were talking about Concord ninth was talking about um things coming up for 2024 and all it said was I think I think it was February again I'm just repeating what I saw online but I, they said something about color like they were just kind of hinting but obviously like there's no info there's no nothing but I it makes me wonder if they're going to release more colors in February who knows but if they do, guaranteed I'll be purchasing them because I like them. And they play nicely with Simon's Positively Saturated inks. So, can you have too many colors? No. Do you need multiple lines of inks? No. They're just fun. <laughs> I like them. Okay, that was Honeycomb. Okay. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Just like your life. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Everything's good. Life is good right now. It's all good. Um, you only have the first one. Yeah, because Concord came out with, gosh, a ton of new color. This looks weird on the monitor. Yellows always do, though. Yellows look weird on camera. The yellows are pretty. This looks like very kind of greenish in a weird way. But in real life, it's very pretty. Um, my brain stopped. Let me think for a second. Yeah, Concord 9th released in April of this year. Like a ton, like they like doubled their color line because I had the original just in their little ink cubes when they first came out with inks, whenever that was, more a couple years ago, whenever. I'm not sure. It's been a long time. In fact, it's been more than a couple years, I think. Whenever that was. I don't even know. I don't even know. But in April of this year, March or April, whenever, because I ordered it all um they like doubled their color line which was amazing and yeah it really they really filled out their color line you know so that was really nice and then yeah I saw that post and it looks like they might they maybe maybe they might be doing more who knows I might be totally wrong though that's just where my mind went when I saw the post I was like ooh, more ink colors <laughs> who knows man like nobody I have no idea and I just I make assumptions based on the things I see online. <laughs> uh yep. Yeah. Okay. This one's buttercup. Which I think was actually supposed to go before honeycomb. I don't even think I had my inks organized properly either. Like I threw them up in the ink holders and just kinda left them like that. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, because that one's way lighter. And then honeycomb is much more neutral. And again, it's not like that green tint. Not really. Not in real life. It'll smooth out as it dries, though. Whatever. Whatever. 
Um, um, I'm in the process of dwindling down my inks because I found I always reach for three specific brands. Well, yeah, it like people definitely don't need. There's so many options now, which I think is pretty cool. Like, I th like nowadays, the sky's the limit with options of ink brands and all the things because so many brands now have their own ink lines and I think that's I just think it's cool um but yeah no regular person needs 15 different types of um brands of ink but since I do this as a job that's how I justify it. and even me I only so far you know have a couple like I don't have tons of inks but that may change. I have lists as long as my arm. Like, I want to get my hands on, like, the Ulta New inks. Pink Fresh has gorgeous inks. Um, I still need to get the full-size Distress inks. I have the cubes. And, all, obviously, all the oxides. I need sunflower. I'm, like, there it is. For all my disorganization, I'm finding the labels fairly quickly. Okay. Well, funnel flower. Get out of there. So, yeah so many good inks out there so many to choose from and yeah me getting more organized that is also part of my plan is if i get more organized and get things swatched and labeled and put away properly etc i'll have more space more space for more 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 room for activities more space for more ink pads that's that's what i'm aiming for because like i said i i like having plenty of options Okay, this one was Stardust. This is one of my favorites. I've shown this one in like so many videos because this is my go-to. Where's the ink pad? This is my go-to one that I like to use because it's the closest shade. Again, my monitor makes it look like crap, but it's the closest shade to gold without being a metallic ink because there's a bunch of amazing gold metallic inks. Well, not a bunch, but... Delicata has a beautiful gold ink. Honeybee has a beautiful gold ink, but those are metallic inks, which they're gorgeous. They have their place, but I use this one more for like the insides of cards or when I just don't want to deal with a metallic ink because they're pigments and they take forever to dry, that sort of a thing. So this is one of my most used inks from the Concord and Ninth line. I love it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and amazing. Now on to the greens. So many good greens. Okay. Now. Stick that in there. And let's, let's keep going. Yeah, I'm not worried if it stamps perfectly or not. I genuinely, I really don't care. I just need the color on cardstock so that I'll be able to see it as a glance. Um, is there a good gold ink you can use to stamp on glass? Uh, I'm not the person to ask that. Um, if Stazon, I think Stazon has a gold, because I think Stazon has some metallic inks, that would probably be one of the only ones that might. You would have to look into it though, because stamping on glass is just a beast in and of itself. And that's something I do not do ever really. Um, I don't like, I don't like, especially glass is not something I enjoy uh, stamping on. It's slick. It's a slick surface. And even if the ink does dry permanently, if you're not going to seal it, all it takes is one little swipe of alcohol and it'll remove everything because it's glass. But yeah, I think Stazon has a has metallic inks. I might even own them. I I never work with Stazon. I don't like the smell. Stazon has a weird smell, and I always laugh because so many people are like, "I love the smell of Stazon." I'm like, one, don't don't huff your inks, and two, Stazon has like that. It's almost like an almond smell. It's weird. It's weird, and I don't I don't know why it really bugs me. So I don't like working with Stazon. It's 
it's yeah but it is a very good for non-porous surfaces because that's what it was formulated for is for non-porous surfaces so yeah yeah um oh i have i have like all the waffle flower like swatching where because like waffle flower released so many and so many like such variety of like swatching sets like stamp sets and dies like the sky's the limit with them like they came up with so many good ones i have them all i've used some of them but i haven't like really gone in because like they have really like some really great ones of like, so you can do swatches of, like, your watercolors and your paints, like, because they have little stamps that you can do, like, the light and fashions. Like, all that info for those types of products, like, are all included in their little sets. And they've got dyes and just all the things. Like, Nina put in a ridiculous amount of time, you know, designing it and all the things. They're awesome. Like, the Waffle Flower swatching sets are amazing. And I have them. I just, that that's going to be its own beast of a process. I'll do it one of these days. Someday. Okay, that's parsley. That's not the color I'm looking for. There we go. Nope. That's artichoke, not avocado. There we go. There's artichoke. Uh, but yeah, Waffle Flower has some really good swatching sets. Concord 9th came out with their own little swatching. There's a die and a stamp set. And the stamp set, they have a stamp set that has like all their ink names. That, and I almost got it because I was like, that's really cute. I was like, you can do the swatches. And like, because they're, and they have cardstock too. And you can like stamp, you know, the, and I was like, yeah, I still might eventually get it, but I just printed off these labels because whatever. No, I did the, no, wait, crap, crap. I think I just messed up. That was avocado, not artichoke. I was looking at the wrong ink. I'm filming. I always tell when it's him. Crap. Can I pull this off? These labels are very permanent. I got distracted. Oh, I'm careful. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. This one was avocado. Artichoke is the darker green. I'm just going to stick that right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, many brands have really cool little swatching sets. Let me fix this. Avocado. Avocado. There we go. I'm a professional. Follow me for more, <laughs> for more tips and tricks. Uh, they can't. They can't. Like, well, they could, but one cost two for it to even be feasible like with a brand to do it they would just have to ma have it mass printed onto whatever you know and like i said earlier it people not everyone uses like the same card stock you know different things so it's like it's just it's not going to be as good as doing it yourself because you know whatever your favorite card stock is isn't what the brand would use or what other people you you know because it does ink looks different on different card stocks it's just the nature of the product same with how like markers act differently on different card stocks yada 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 so thankfully like this process it doesn't really take that long as long as, as, long as you're paying attention as long as you're paying attention um so yeah and some people don't need are just like I said earlier aren't into swatching stuff and they're fine with it and that's fine it's totally fine I do it because I like it once I actually get it done and then I do refer to it a lot like once I actually make myself do my swatches I was like I flip through my swatch books frequently um you know because it's like oh I want this color or, you know or I think such and such brand has such and such color and then I'll flip through my little my little swatches and it's like yep that's the color i was going for so with inks i don't find it really as big of a thing for the most part it's other products and those are of course the ones i really do need to swatch like my 
Um, I swatch like my shimmer powders. I've, I've done videos on that, like my Lindy's Magical powders. Those type of products I actually legit need swatches of because it's those are the things where the product looks like powder or whatever in the container. Completely different how it looks when you've added water or whatever. Those are the ones that like need to be swatched in my opinion. Okay, what color would I use? That was Sprout. Right there. Okay, we're good. We're good. But I find like ink pads for the most part don't need swatching as much. But it is nice to have them. Like I like, I do refer to mine a lot. Okay, so that was Sprout. And then this one is Parsley. There we go. Boop. Perfection. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. It's gorgeous green. Love them. Okay. Much better. Wipe that off. Okay. Parsley. That's not the one I'm wanting. That's clover. Where did you go, parsley? Nope. There we go. Okay. Get that one in place. Add that to the pile. Let's put ooh, more of these ink pads away because I'll organize them and put them back later because I didn't plan that. Very good, even though I'm a professional. Do the next stack. Okay. Got that. And that. Okay. Wah. Clover. This is like a very intense green. Really pretty. Really pretty. Clean that off. Wipe that down. Look for the label. Maybe over here. Nope. Yep. Bingo. Get that done. Set that one aside. I keep this somewhat organized, which again, you guys only have to see like <laughs> this much. I have stuff piled up everywhere and on the floor and on my cart beside me and on my other chair where, where the unpaid intern sits, which I have to clean off before tomorrow's live because <laughs> Uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I got five million things I need to do today. Like one of the crappy things about being self-employed. It's like I got I got to do all the things. There's there's no one else to do it. Okay, that's juniper, which is also just oh, beautiful, beautiful, very much a blue toned green shade. Juniper and then Evergreen, which is another gorgeous color. Okay. Very deep, very beautiful, very love. Okay. So I'll wipe off that. Okay, that's evergreen. Nope. Yep. Okay. Evergreen, and then we get into sea glass. Can't go wrong with pretty light aqua shades. 
love it. Love it. Okay. Nope. Nope. Yep. There's a piles of the labels. Oh, progress. I'm feeling better. This just checking this off the to-do list after it's been sitting like this for so long. It feels so good. It feels so good to get it done. Almost done. We're almost there. All right. Sea glass. Aqua sky. Which is a little more on the blue side. Sea glass is more on the green side. Aqua sky is definitely more on the blue side. Like, obviously. Obviously. Okay, I'm gonna grab another one of these. All right. Hopefully everything's still working. Hope everybody can still see and hear me. You never know sometimes if I'm just I'm screaming into the ether. Okay. Get that cleaned off. Okay, that was Aqua Sky. Find that label. Nope. Yep. There we go. Um. Yes. Uh, wait. Uh, let me get that. There we go. Um. I mentioned that in the beginning of this video. I have little binders from simple stories because i thankfully stocked up i have extras of these because simple stories doesn't make these anymore which just annoys me because i like the simple stories they're, they're cute they're cute and like they're littler these are only seven inches yeah these are like seven by nine because they're meant for the little simple stories binders but Simple Stories stopped making this size of... Because these were meant for Insta. I think that's what they were labeled as, is Insta pocket pages. I think that's what they were called. And they were meant to print off little squares. You know, like your little Instagram pictures. I think that's what they were invented for. And yeah, they stopped making these years ago. Um, but, and I said that in the beginning, you can use coin pocket protectors. I do have a link. And then you can just use a regular size binder, like an 8.5 by 11 type binder. And... Who knows? Down the road, I may switch over to that because then you can fit more. But yeah, I haven't though. I've lately, I just keep these on a little binder ring. I have a link to that too with the supplies. These are just one of the Tim Holtz little like cable rings because these unscrew. And then that way I can just hang them up. But the plan is eventually to put them in a binder, but I just keep them hung up on one of the little things for my lights, like the thing that you tighten, whatever it's called. My brain is starting to just... Psh, but yeah, I'll just hang it. So then I can just grab it right in front of me and flip through it. But eventually I'll probably like put them in a proper binder, but I know where to put the binders. But I have some of their binders because that was the whole point. So I got cute little binders and I got my little pocket pages and that little cardstock is, there we go. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the plan, you know, but just getting the swatches done you know, is a huge achievement for me. And then I'll put them into the pages and at the bare minimum, I'll just even just attach them probably to the same pile of, because the other ones that I was showing were the Simon positively saturated swatches. And since I use these inks kind of interchangeably with the Simon ones, because again, I've said this before, I cannot say for a hundred percent certain that the formula for these is the same as Simon's Positively Saturated because they're two completely different companies, you know? Um, but at the very least, they're very similar, you know? So they just, they play well together. So for me, that's more than enough. You know, I can make it work. And then that just gives me more colors. So I switch back and forth between both brands and it makes me happy. So that was Tide Pool. That was beautiful. Now we're doing Oceanside, which is another one of my... They're all my favorites. What do I see? I'm a broken record. This one's my favorite. I'm like, you know, when you're a kid and it's like, this is my favorite. And then the next thing's your favorite. And then the next thing's your favorite. Yeah, I'm like that with color. This is my favorite. <laughs> Until I stamp the next one. <laughs> so yeah, that's Oceanside. It's beautiful. Like, beautiful. Okay. 
no flower sack cloth to wipe the stamp dry. Okay, let's put the label on this one to make sure I'm doing this all properly. Ocean side. Yeah, and the next one's peacock, and this one's gorgeous. This one's much more blue. It's like teal. Oh. Love it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's amazing. We love it. Like, yes. Because, yeah, that's Oceanside. That one is Peacock. Where's the label? Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. There it is. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Okay. Bump those. And then we're getting into the actual, like, blue, blue shades. There's so many beautiful colors. Now, yes, like, that's what I love, honestly, you know. The fact that, you know, so many brands now have their own lines of ink and cardstock and all the things. And it's just, like, options. Man, we all have options. Because when I started making cards, there weren't any options. Like, there was nothing, really. And we didn't have the formulas we have now either. And it's just, uh, it's so nice. We have so many colors to choose from and so many shades. Cause now with the layering stamps and the layering stencils, all these brands coming out with like a light, medium, dark, or even like four shades of colors. It's like, I love it. I love it. Cause I was like, one, I love options. And two, can you, again, can you ever have too many colors? No, no, you cannot. So I like it. So many, so many beautiful colors. So that's Harbor, which is just a really pretty like powder blue. I just need to find a label for this one too. Let's, let's just get rid of some of that. Okay, so that's powder, that's, oh, that's the really light blue. That's not what I want. That's midnight, that'll be the dark blue. Harbor, nope, nope. Where'd you go? Where? I lost it. Midnight? No. Blueberry? No. Powder? No. Harbor. There it is. It was right in front of my face. Ay, ay, ay. I started stamping in 1991. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there just wasn't... We didn't have the options. And the stamps were different. You know, back in the day, it was all red rubber on wood. You know? Which was fine. Like a good red rubber stamp. Ooh, they stamp really well. But layering was hardly a thing. We had to have our stamp -a jigs you know, and all the things to even like to attempt to restamp everything. Like we didn't we didn't have miss like we didn't have anything. Like stamping in the dark ages was a totally different thing than it is now. <laughs> now we have all the toys and all the inks and all the fun things and it just makes me happy. I love it. It's changed a lot in the last, just in the last, what, five, six years, something. It's been, it's been fun. I like it. Okay, this is blueberry, which is like pretty much a true blue. Very pretty. It's my favorite. <laughs> okay blueberry yeah things have changed a lot it's it's been very interesting really when I stop and think back to when I started to what it is now night and day difference not to mention when I first started making cards and stuff I never in a million years thought I'd be sitting here hell Facebook didn't exist when I started stamping you know like YouTube all of it none of it existed some ways the world is worse because of it in other ways i wouldn't have this job so yeah take the good with the bad what am i doing blueberry midnight we're going on to midnight another one of my faves this is a beautiful oh. very deep very deep very dark blue okay like a navy because yeah that's blueberry that's midnight Gorgeous. All right, clean that guy off. That was midnight. Love it. Love it. Oh, 
<laughs> and then we're now going to the really super light, which is powder, which is just very, very pale. And that one, I'm curious, where's my... Yeah, just slightly different, because that's harbor. This one is powder. Here's powder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then the other, those other two really pale ones were sea glass and aqua sky. And see these, see you can see, they look more speckly Till they really start to dry this is what i talk about about them smoothing out because when you first stamp them and the ink is still wet i think you guys can see that like they're they're speckly you know and then as it smooths out it, it like as it dries it starts to smooth out you know it's just it's part of the formula but yeah sea glass aqua sky harbor powder they're just they're just beautiful i'm not even keeping these organized i'll deal with that later Okay, that was all the blues. Oof. Let me get these back into this container. Because, again, otherwise I'm going to knock all of these over. Which happens all the bloody time. Oh, man. I really do have a huge, huge mess to clean up. Fun! Fun times, man. Purples. Purples and grays and neutrals, and then we're done. Because I'm just trying to get this done. And I'm not swatching, because Concord 9th has a black and a white. I'm not swatching those. Black and white is black and white. I don't. They're fine. They're fine. So, let's do the purples, because the purples are beautiful. Okay. Uh, this is lilac. Another favorite. They're all favorites. Like I've said a million times. It's so beautiful. I love it. But yeah, you can really like it speckly. And then it'll smooth out and be all gorgeous when it dries. Okay. So that's lilac. Um, there we go. So lilac. That up there for a second. Lilac and then fig, which is much more intense. Fig is similar to uh, seedless preserves with the distress ink line. That's what I think of when I use when I use fig. It is just a really gorgeous, not quite as pink as seedless preserves. Seedless preserves has more of that like real pink undertone to it that just. Mm. But fig is similar. But again, unique. I love it. It's beautiful. No, these inks are just delicious. Don't eat them, but they are delicious. Okay. So yeah, there's lilac and fig. See, and that's where I hope. I kind of hope I'm I hope I'm right. And that Concord in Ninth is going to do more colors because I kind of hope that they're going to do, you know, more colors in the sense to fill out the line. Like they could totally do a purple in between these two shades, you know, because I just the jump between the two is way too intense in my opinion. And it's like, ooh, you could fit a nice purple right in between those. I would love it. Please and thank you. <laughs> uh... And then this one is grape soda, which is like just a kind of a true purple. Oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. And that's getting covered in ink. I'm getting covered in ink. Oh. Yeah, fig is beautiful. Oh, see and how like it's just it's smoothing out as it dries. Mm. Love them so much. And then yeah, grape soda is an is intense. It's nice deep. Just nice deep purple, and it's not even the darkest one because eggplant is their darkest one. Okay, 
That's not it. That's the one. That's grape soda. So yeah, I would love to have one just in between those two. Because yeah, lilac, fig, and grape soda. Gorgeous. And then you get eggplant. And eggplant is oh, just, just absolutely. Um, we'll see you later, Patty Sally. It's all good. I'm almost done. So it is all good. Yeah, that's eggplant. Eggplant is beautiful. I really love these dark, intense colors. But then I love all the pale, soft colors too. It just depends on, you know, the look I'm going for. So that one's eggplant. Where's the label for that? There it is. Okay. So there we go. So yeah, you got lilac, fig, grape soda, and eggplant. Just gorgeous these three are perfect i just i i genuinely i would love to have just one more in between these two you know just like a, a medium shade of purple that in, in my opinion like ugh, purples are the hardest you know there's there's not much variety in purples especially in this industry and in my opinion you can never have too many purples because purples are just difficult okay where am i going neutrals so we got pebble which is like a warm, ooh, there, see, there was purple on there. There was purple on there. That's not a good swatch. I didn't clean my stamp well enough. It's a good thing I had a couple extras. Purples are just as bad as reds and pinks because they have red and pinks in them for staining and transferring. So that, I, that's not a good swatch. It's got purple in it. And pebble is not purple. There's no purple undertones. The stamp was, wasn't clean enough. So let's do that a second time. Uh, let's actually make sure I got this clean. Um, let's take stamp cleaner again. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'll just stamp the back of this first just to make sure. Did I get that right? Better. Better. Yeah. <laughs> purple in it. <laughs> There's pur That's how it's supposed to look. It's not supposed to have purple in it. Okay. This is better. Let's give it one more wipe. Because, yeah doing swatches sometimes that's one of the things you got to make sure you actually clean the stamp off proper in between because certain colors like to be like to be trouble okay here we go much better that is how it's supposed to look that is pebble just a nice light warm gray not purple it's it's not that was the first one. So that's when you can tell your my stamp was dirty because night and day difference. <laughs> oh, we're good. We're good. Good thing I was actually paying attention because you guys have already seen if I'm not, I label things wrong and do it wrong. All right, we should be good now because now that that purple's fully removed from the stamp, we can finish all these. So this one's cobblestone. So just a darker warm gray. I love purple so much. They're all gorgeous. Big and they are. I just, purples, ugh, like, love them. And again, it depends on my mood, because like Simon's got, two, they, you know, they're two sets of purples, and then they released that last, most recent set, which is, was more dusty purples, which I was like, so I love bright purples, I love pinky purples, I love blue purples, you know, and then dusty purples. I was like, oh yeah, bring them on, man. More purple, the better. I love them. I love them all. Okay, this is cobblestone. Cobblestone. 
cobblestone. So yeah, pebble, cobblestone. Oh, did I lose? Or did I not cut enough square? Oh, no, they were hiding. Okay. Whew. I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I had prepped properly. I find purples are either really light or really dark. They must be hard for manufacturers. But yeah, purples are just a very, very different, difficult color. Um, that was why purple was, you know, for royalty and all that. Because purple is notoriously difficult. And there's not much variety in purple. Um, you know, you add other things to it. Like blue or pink or red to get sort of different shades. But yeah, purple is is a unique little beast and I love I love purple obviously obviously I like purple but yeah just there's not a lot of purple out there in anything really and that's just yeah it's a difficult it's a difficult color to work with okay that was dove somewhere something there's a label for it so a cooler gray Pebble and cobblestone are a bit warmer grays. And then dove gets into a little bit cooler. And then mushroom, which is a nice dark, a nice dark gray. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay that cleaned off mm. I kind of need to wash my stone scrubber because it's now got like pinks and purples all in it I'll be doing that after this video too amongst the five million other things I need to do okay so that was mushroom just like so then the last two almost done hooray Last two are wheat and nutmeg. So wheat is just a nice soft brown. Love. In fact, I'll just move that up there because I'll just label that in a second. Get that wiped off. And then nutmeg is what I would call more like a medium brown. It's not super dark. And again, a very warm, like a warm brown, in my opinion. There we go. Okay, so that one's wheat, that one's nutmeg. And on camera, this looks a lot darker. Oh yeah, it's a medium to a dark. Okay, that one's nutmeg. And that one is wheat. And they're all beautiful. Love it. Where's my stamp set? Let's put that over there. Get off there. Do me. Okay. Okay. I got them done. Can check that off my list. I got to hunt down. I don't even know where I put my little pocket pages. I came across them the other day and I knew, I was like, oh, I should put these where I can find them. Did I do that? No, I put them where I can't find them, as always. But I've got my... All oh, my swatches are done for the Concord Ninth Inks. So that is progress for me, which is awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I can finally check that off and just... Oh, look at all these beautiful, colors. beautiful, beautiful beautiful colors so yeah thanks for hanging out with me you guys and chatting with me and i think i'll be able to upload this to my youtube channel if you're watching it on youtube it means i actually managed to do it without breaking anything we'll see i won't know till i end this and then if it gives my software gives me the option and then yeah those on facebook there'll be um links with the po with the video to all the things and then if you're watching on youtube links to all the things are in the description box below the video and just stay tuned. I'll have other videos coming, going live on Sunday. That's December 17th. Sunday, December 17th, 2 p.m. Central on my YouTube channel. I'll post the graphics and the link and all the things once I set that up. That'll be later today. 
I got other things I need to do before I get to that. <laughs> but yeah, you guys can join me for that and we'll just see where everything goes. And yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you all later.